Uh, we've cornered uh, Greg and Ray here from uh, Bioware uh, at the uh, EA Business Lounge here at uh, Gamescom. And um, I thought I'd start out with Mass Effect because I'm, I'm currently replaying Mass Effect 2. I want to get my female shepherd badass through the game so I can, I can play Mass Effect 3 with her. And, and one thing that strikes me when I play that game and, and playing it for the second time and seeing the different choices that I made as I played through the first game and now the second game, it's like uh, the narrative for Mass Effect 3 has to have been locked down very early, like maybe 2005, 2006, somewhere. Sort of, how do you how do you go about that, and and how locked down was it? Is it or or did it change along the way, or or is it just certain things that you lock down, and then the rest is, is sort of still still in in flux? Well, there's the, and there's been a. A plan, high-level plan, you know, because we always talked about this being a trilogy. We want to make sure Mass Effect 3 is simultaneously the beginning of a new grand galactic adventure, but also the end, uh, you know, satisfying ending to that trilogy. And it's going to be both things. And I'm really proud of the team for being able to deliver that. It's not easy, as you say, to deliver a story arc that spans multiple products over years, you know, on multiple platforms. But we've delivered it. I think the fans are going to find a really satisfying end point to the to the shepherd story but also a beginning to a new adventure and it's going to pull in new fans as a result too but it, i think in terms of the details we've listened to fan feedback we're always very open to feedback from fans you know it's part of our core value of humility we have to listen to our core fans and our new fans alike and we have to take their feedback to heart to make our games better and we do that in all aspects of our gameplay features and online connectivity and downloadable content and story and the graphics and everything. It's, it, everything can be improved, so we're always iterating and trying to refine that. And the story is no exception. We, we try and tune the adventure based on what players express the most interest in and what they seem to enjoy doing the most in Mass Effect 1 and Mass Effect 2. So we well, can refine the small details, but we also have sort of a, a directional sense for the story arc in the trilogy. And we also want to make it a beginning of a, a new adventure to bring in new people. So you can, if you're going to enter one game, in the Mass Effect franchise, I would say Mass Effect 3 is the one to do it in because, because it is that beginning aspect to it as well. And it's also incredibly you know, action-oriented, emotionally in engaging. It's got deep, deep RPG systems. We're, we're improving and refining on those as well. So it's, it's got a lot of things for different audiences. Because one thing that I found, and I'm, I'm one of those guys who say, well, you got to read the novel if you want to get most out of the game. And you gotta, you got to read the graphic novel because like, like Lair, the Shadow Broker and all that stuff really came up when I, I read the Mass Effect Redemption and stuff like that, sort of tied together with Liara's story and you get that. And, and sort of, I always had a sense like Liara plays maybe a, not a big role in Mass Effect 2 because she's going to have a big role in Mass Effect 3. So you could sort of sense sort of how you, you build all of that up and, and it's like, it's like this, this master plan that we get to see unfold with Mass Effect 3. Yeah, I think I think it's very true. Like in terms of how we develop the story arc, the, the ancillary products that you're describing is something a lot of our core fans love, and we're really excited to be able to deliver that. You know, comic books and novels and downloadable content and expansion packs, things like that. It's wonderful to be able to do that, and it's certainly they're optional. You don't have to consume them to have a great experience in any of our games. But it, you know, it's part of the the franchise extension, part of the IP universe, being able to have um, ancillary products and, and spin-offs and different platforms. And you know, in the future, it's pretty bright. We have lots of opportunities social games and, and new business models and new, new, new spin-offs as well. You know, and all of our franchises will be, will be trying to deliver because that's where players are. They're, they're, they're playing on the console, they're playing on the PC, they're playing on social platforms and it's great to be able to offer things that allow them to extend their experience outside the game universe, you know, the traditional defi definition of a game universe. Yeah, one, thing, one thing I would add too is like one thing that, that makes all those extra things work, like the novel, the comics, it's actually people from the game franchise that are driving those and working on those. Like I think a lot of companies, what they do is they say, hey, they'll make a novel or whatever. It's not actually made by the people making, they almost like outsource it. You know, and so some random writer writes it, they kind of edit it and go, oh, there it is. But you know, really our stuff is written by the people that write it. It's even the same with like, you know, both with Mass Effect, the books, Dragon Age, the books, Star Wars like the ancillary stuff, like it's really driven by the teams and with, with, with people that know it. And so in the case of Mass Effect, you have that ability to structure everything very intricately and very, very smartly with a vision for the future, a vision what's coming down the pipe and sort of building up rather than just randomly. And I think that's actually one of the big differences that we've taken. Different, and it's worked out really well. I think it's very been strong. Fans have been really responding well. I'm already thinking about like what sort of hidden information was in the third novel. <laughs> That, that's gonna sort of give a hint of, of the story. Because in the second novel, of course, you got a hint about the collectors yeah, yeah. And, and who they were. Uh, and then, yeah. So, 
gives, so. you, it gives you a good sense of where we're, where we're going to go. And it, it's wonderful, you know, it's for the fans that are into that, to, to delight them and surprise them with like, oh man, yeah, I, I read that in that book, I saw that in that comic, or I saw that in that downloadable pack, and now it's extended further. And it, you know, it's hard, frankly, it's really difficult to be able to do that in an elegant way that actually makes sense for both new players who haven't experienced it as well as players, the core fans who are getting into that. And we love being able to appeal to a wide audience. As Greg said, it's really possible because there's a clear unified vision at the start uh, of each of the projects and also you know for the franchise there's a clear vision for the franchise as a whole and because of the the team that's working on it is consistent across different products so that enables that 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 vision to be expressed in a way that feels right no matter what what product you're looking at what whether it's a novel or a comic book or extension on a different platform or whatever you know it's got to feel right to the fans it also feels like that's the perfect fit for like the digital future that we're in right now where where sort of products don't die they're sort of just evolve and they 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 sort of grow and, and I guess the old public will be even more like that because you're going to have a service essentially. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's interesting. I mean, obviously with Lucas, we're in deep partnership for many, many years and we work together with them on a lot of stuff. Like, I mean, there's like novels, there's there's comics and there's a lot of stuff that, you know, a game like Star Wars, there's all the supporting structure around it, Star Wars The Old Republic, you know, that, that we work on together. And it's, it's exciting because we actually, we're able to you know, think of things in a really long-term way. Like I think both Ray and myself, like our vision when we started Bayer was, we always had like five, even ten-year plans where we wanted to go. And I mean, they changed. We had we had an idea where we want. We didn't think short-term. You know, we thought long-term. And so it's very exciting to look at embarking on something like the like the post-launch world of Star Wars: The Old Republic and go, wow, this is going to go on for a long time. And we got to think of how we're going to continue to grow and evolve and, and be better. You know, three years from now than we are today. We learn a lot from working with great partners like LucasArts who have that vision. Yeah. You know. 30 years vision of how they want to unfold and, and to re, you know build in bring in new customers and and keep their their existing fans happy and and you know it's it's actually really exciting to be part of that and to work in the Knights of the Old Republic universe now becoming you know the, the Old Republic universe in an MMO setting it's 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 been a good partnership with them. I, I guess they, they have a lot of experience in working with an expanded universe and, and sort of handling all that sort of all those parts. I I think uh, we we mentioned uh, we we sat in on a breakfast meeting with with Ken. You know his is uh, the guy who made the world there. Ari Salvatore was, I think, he was tasked with killing off Chewbacca. Oh yeah. By the by uh, in a in a book. And that's sort of the way that they they work on on their expanded universe, and they have, I, I don't know how many writers who write Star Wars books, but there's a lot of them. So, yeah. it's uh, you know, it's it's something that I'm sure any any game developer can learn from just how you handle a universe like that. Yeah. No, I totally agree. Trying to tie it all together with a long question and a short answer there. <laughs> you, you, you answered it well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very good. All right. We might cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So um, we, we mentioned Mass Effect a lot, uh, and we've talked about Star Wars The Old Republic. I, I think a lot of people were hoping for a date here at Gamescom, and we're sort of clinging, like, come on, come on, give us a date. Um, is it because you're not comfortable when you, get, when you can launch, or is it is it just a case of the timing when you want to when you want to talk about that. There's so many variables that come together with an MMO launch. You know, it's the quality of service, the scalability, the security, uh, the you know the quality of the content. These all have to be like rock solid, and, and we're committed to that to make sure that we deliver a game that's going to be really embraced by fans, not just at launch, but for years and years to come. And we know we want to get that right, so we're, we're testing all those elements really aggressively now, and make sure that we have a, a game that's going to scale well. It's going to be a high quality service, and, and, and the content's going to feel right too. We have to get everything just right. So now we definitely have a target in mind, and we want to we want to deliver a game that's going to be really consistent with what the player expectations are for a, an MMO from Bioware and Electronic Arts, and uh, a game that's in the Star Wars universe. You know, there's high expectations for that. Well, I think also, I mean, to, just to be clear, I mean, I think just as a as a pure initial launch. Star Wars The Old Republic is probably the biggest launch in MMO history, or in game history even. I mean, the games like World of Warcraft, of course, I mean, have they had a moderate size launch, but they've grown to be immense. So they're, I mean, they're bigger than we'll launch at by many, many times, but the reality is, like, you know, it's as in a launch itself, it's huge, it's massive, it's a, it's a global undertaking with, with, like, people all over the world having to do all the right things, just the right sequence, the right time. And as Ray said, getting that service right, it's so important. We know we feel very strong that we have the great game. You know, like we, we feel we have a really good game. We've been testing it. We've been playing our brain and I play it ourselves all the time. Yeah. Um, the whole bunch of, everyone in the studio plays it. Everyone's having a great time playing it. We want to make sure that when we launch it, that service is rock solid. 
reliable, the technology is there. I mean, the, the fans' expectation, the standard we have to meet on service is very high, and we want to, you know, do, do the Bioware name justice with the actual game that we deliver in terms of just availability, reliability, you know, all that stuff, and it's, that's, it's, that's hard. I think, I think people don't realize how, you know, it's one thing to just make a game, like, and now we look at it and have a whole new perspective and appreciation for just launching a game service is a big, big deal. Yeah. It's going well. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. the great thing is that, as Greg said, the people are playing it. We have a lot of consumers in our beta tests now. We're expanding those out, like, really aggressively, so yeah. over the next few months, more and more players are gonna get into our beta testing program, and that's gonna be really a test of the content. It's gonna be a test of the service, a test of the scalability, the security, all aspects of it, and it's gotta be perfect, you know, but, it's not something we we will not we're going to continue to work on it post launch as well that's the great thing too we're going to get great feedback uh, during the beta test program we're going to get f great feedback post launch so that it's more of a directional thing we're always striving to make it awesome and we're going to get great feedback and telemetry and and player uh, response from from playing the game to make it better and better still so we have a, a really aggressive plan post launch to continue to support it with new content new features patching it making it better and better and we're not going to rest on our laurels it's going to be it's going to be great at launch and it's going to continue to prove for the next decade to come I think what you touched upon there is, is like the standard that WoW has set really for MMOs and I think why a lot of new MMOs have stumbled is because it's just a daunting task to sort of even rival the amount of content and the amount of polish that they put in because World of Warcraft now is a completely different game than it was when it launched in terms of like accessibility and user friendliness and all that. Um, but also I guess you're in a privileged position because you don't have to push it out at, at a set date because the air, the air kind of they have a lot of money to spend so you you yeah, but it's good for I was gonna say it's good for both of us to get it out at the right time I think for us and for game and one of the one of the interesting dimension for us is still to put another perspective on it because we mythic it's now bio or mythic part of the mythic family they have a great history of incredibly solid launches like their launches technically have been like just flawless and that's been one of the wonderful bits of DNA that we brought in and we've got a lot of folks from Mythic helping out um, on Star Wars. They've brought, they've brought a lot to the table because they just they really know how to do that stuff and take it very very seriously and that's been a wonderful addition to the to overall team too. And frankly the, you know the fans are clamoring for it to come out they want to play it you know we had a lot of <laughs> yeah. fans are like please please can we get it soon you know and, and we want to bring it to them because because it is a great game it's incredibly fun for the beta testers and all the team playing it and we want to get it in the fans' hands so we can get their feedback and uh, continue to evolve and improve it. That's how you make a game better as a service, is you, you, know, you, you look at it as a very dynamic offering. But we want to make sure what we launch is solid, and uh, we are trying to get it out as soon as we can once we achieve those goals of uh, high quality service and scalability and reliability, availability, and all those things that, that Greg talked about. Now we know, we know it's going to appeal to a wide audience. I mean, Star Wars, and a powerful IP, one of, arguably the most powerful IP in the world, uh, and there's many millions and millions of fans who probably are potential customers for this kind of MMO. So you know, we have an obligation to make sure we, we fulfill that brand fundamental, you know, in, con together with our partners at LucasArts, and we're, we're committed to that. And we want to make sure that we also appeal to all the fans of other MMOs. You know, many people are looking for change. They're looking for new, new, fresh ideas. And Star Wars: The Old Republic has a lot of innovation in how we deliver story and how we really bring that uh, that emotional engagement from a player perspective. We have the best of breed features of great MMOs, like the ones you talked about. You know, the exploration and the combat and the progression. We also have something new and fresh. And I think uh, that combined with the Star Wars IP is a is a winning combination. I think we have a hovering PR here over our our heads. So one final question. Well, it's, it's a quick one. I'm sure they can't answer it. Can we get like uh, something about the future of Dragon Age? Can you say anything about the future of Dragon Age and where, what direction you're taking it? Yeah, I mean, it, frankly, we, we love feedback from our fans. We got a lot of great feedback on Dragon Age 2, and you know we're we're committed to taking that feedback and reaching a wider audience, and and, and also learning from the the feedback of our core fans and making sure we address some of their feedback. You know, some of them felt they wanted more about Dragon Age Origins, and you know, we have also millions of new fans that, that really enjoyed the new features and the action combat and things like that that we brought in Dragon Age 2. So what we're trying to do, we'll, and we'll announce more details on this later, in future installments of the Dragon Age franchise is try and marry those together and then bring our core fans along with us in the journey but also reach millions of new fans too and provide an accessible, rich, fast, intense, intense deep, story, emotionally engaging experience that uh, I think fans will really enjoy. We're working hard on it. Thank you very much, both of you, for your time. Thank you. Thank you.